Hi guys, uh, my name is Lyndon, and today I want to talk a little bit about the GH6, talk about why I like it, and I want to share what custom button settings that I have decided to go with. Lyndon LeBayan. Spoiler, I love the camera. The GH6 came in three weeks ago, and I haven't done any like professional shoots or any paid gigs with it. I mainly just wanted to get used to like the settings, figure out what settings I liked, where I wanted what button to be assigned to or whatever. Uh, so I've just been shooting around the house, shooting my dog outside or whatever at the park. Let me give you context first. Okay, first of all, uh, I'm a full-time software developer. I shoot weddings on the side. Weddings are not my primary income, and, and while I'll I'll say money's not the reason why I'm shooting the weddings. I did a video talking about like why the hell I love wedding videos so much, but money is definitely an enabler. You know, it, it helps you buy stuff. I say context is important because maybe if this was my primary income, I'd be buying different things or liking different things, uh, picking different brands or whatever. But for where I am with what I do, I love Micro Four Thirds and I, I don't see myself leaving it anytime soon. That's context. Now I'm gonna talk about the GH6. Okay, so right from the get-go, I can tell you having 10-bit everything is amazing. I mean, people will say like, oh, you know, you can't tell. You know, you don't see 10-bit color. Your your couples aren't gonna watch it on a 10-bit TV or whatever. They're not gonna, you're not producing HDR content. Like, okay, fine, fair. But it's just nice having that flexibility. There's, there's, a, there's a peace of mind knowing that no matter what the hell I pick, as long as I'm in the right codec and I'm over here or whatever, I'm gonna get 10-bit color. Shooting vlog especially, you want that flexibility. It'll be a mix of 422, 420, but it's still great. The fact that this tiny package can give me Cinema 4K 60, Cinema 4K 120, 5.7K 60. One of the biggest crutches of uh, wedding filmmaking is the slow-mo, you know? And, being able to slow down shots that you weren't planning on slowing down to begin with or or shooting something where you're not sure if you're going to need to slow down later. Being able to shoot at least 60p at these resolutions, full 10-bit, at 422 or 420, whatever it allows you to do, is pretty awesome. Those alone are more than enough to have the GH6 added to my current uh, wedding, wedding videography kit. Having the GH6 replace my G9 was also an easy decision because the G9 does not have unlimited recording and the GH6 obviously does, so no brainer again. If I was to pick out one thing I don't really like or wish I didn't have uh, in lieu of another feature is dynamic range boost. I'm not, I don't know. I wish instead of dynamic range boost, we had dual ISO, dual native ISO. Like the S5 shoots at 640 base for Vlog and 4000 for secondary base. I would take that over this dual gain stuff. It's fine, but it's not its not helping the low light. That's really the only like, new feature I would have traded for, uh, for something else, but other things like the dual uh, record buttons in the top and the front here, uh, the dedicated audio button, um, the screen that does the, you know, pop out and can also, also flip out. These are nice to haves. I, I wouldn't have called them uh, deal breakers if they if they weren't there, but they're just they're nice they are nice to have. Okay, okay. Speaking of buttons, let's uh, we'll get into the buttons right now. So there's just as many, if not like one or two more, uh, custom uh, function buttons that can be used on this thing. I'll share what what I've decided to settle on. So we'll start with the first this uh, this bottom front uh, function button here. I've set this to the image area for video, uh, either full or pixel to pixel. You kind of treat it like a like a like a zoom. It's not really digital zooming. It's it's resolving 4K or the Cinema 4K uh, to the actual pixel count on the sensor. So for the 4K resolutions, I'm using this pixel to pixel in case I need to punch in just a little more. So the next function button is the one just above the bottom here. So it's like right beside uh, the top right section of the lens here in the grip. Uh, this one I've decided to make it the. I think it's the 2-1. I'm using the 2-1 frame marker. I actually like to work in like a 2-1. Uh, timeline just for that extra wide feel so when I shoot these weddings even though I'm shooting in cinema 4k just to make sure I get as wide as possible I am turning on this frame marker just to show me uh, I'm, I'm able to frame for that 2-1 properly the next button I've customized is the exposure compensation button I don't actually use this uh, on any of the cameras I don't actually use like the exposure compensation I usually just rely on the uh, on the waveform I have 
set this to the dynamic range boost. I'm typically going to have this off. I mean, if if I'm in broad daylight and I'm, I'm able to, you know, to really make, make use of it, I might use it, but bumps up the ISO to 2000 minimum, so who knows when I'll actually use it. I kept the audio button the same. I really like having the uh, the audio button there. Moving to the back, uh, the quick menu. I've actually kept the quick menu as the quick menu. These are pretty much default. I've got the exposure mode. We've got the record file format. Uh, here we have the resolution and frame rate. If I feel like I need to customize the menu later on, I probably will do that. Below that is this wheel. Uh, these actually are buttons too. Um, the up, down, left, right are custom buttons. When held, you can actually set them to uh, whatever you want. So starting with the right side, I've got this set to E stabilization. It'll crop in, uh, but in a pinch, if I need that extra stay, I, I can do that. So for the down button, I have this set to the boost IS mode. And essentially it enables like tripod mode. And it only gets better with lenses that have uh, optical image stabilization. The left button, I have this set to the waveform toggler. If I know I'm exposed properly, I just wanna see the full image. I can toggle that on and off. And for up, I have this set to punch in zoom. Uh, sometimes with manual zoom, I wanna be able to punch in. I have the default setting for zooming when it, I have that set to like the uh, picture in picture uh, zooming. But if I really wanna punch in, I can exit that and I can press up and it'll just zoom in completely. So that's pretty much it with my uh, custom buttons. I'm still gonna play around with the camera some more. I would like to do like a promo shoot or something for fun. So again, my wedding season is until like June and then it's packed. But until then I have no like paid gigs or like I don't have anything on the line. I'm excited to shoot with the GH6. I'm, I'm excited uh, to add this to my uh, my kit. And I, I'm still trying to imagine of like when I'm gonna be swapping out the S5 for the GH6 as like a primary and secondary camera. Other than the low light capabilities of the S5, like these are equal to me now, uh, as far as like, you know, producing an image. Man, this video was all over the place. Guys, thank you for watching. It's obvious people are really passionate about camera bodies and lenses. So if we don't agree on something, um, I guess, let me know in the comments. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.